Hi and welcome to the 10th part of this DCP web HTML5 and CSS beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to build tables using HTML5. So the first thing we do is open up our web browser and notepad plus plus. Let's just get our browser over here and like usual we open up this folder and we'll drag and drop the index file here and if you don't see the content inside notepad plus plus just drag and drop it into notepad plus plus as well we can now close this window and we'll make this full screen so if you remember last place we finished was uh, we created this form right so we put in this hr tag if you don't have one put in a hr tag here just this horizontal line so we get this line here and we want to create a table so I'm going to show you how to create some basic tables so the first thing we do is probably give a table a title so let's give the table a title above so then we know what the table below what the information is actually about so this time instead of creating a h2 tag we'll create a h3 tag it's like one level below h2 so you can consider header tags almost like levels of importance or subheadings think of it that way so let's say we want to make a table about staff members in our company so we'll create this title it's called staff members here and then we'll go down a line and we want to indent do an indentation so we want to hit the tab key so that we're going to indent this content a bit yeah and we want to create something called a table so let's put in a table tag and like usual when we start a table tag we must close it so we'll close it so now we've got a table tag in here. This is going to be where all our content is going to go. So in this example, we need to f really when you build tables, you should try and think about how many columns you need, not how many rows. Rows are, you can add as many rows as you want, but you should always try and understand how many columns you want um, in your table. So in this example, let's say if we, were, we, we want to record a bit of information about our staff members, right? So we want their name, their telephone number, their email address and maybe their location because they might be located different places around the country so we want four we want name telephone email and we also want location so the first thing we need to do is create a table row tr and we need to close that table row so let's close it below now we can put data data in between our table row so let's put in here um, table data and we want to close our table data here. and now we can put content in between so we want name now to make life easier I'm going to copy this and paste it below four times because we want four rows right four columns should I say so the first one is name the second one will be telephone third one will be email and then the last one will be location so let's check this now refresh so here we can see name telephone email and location now as default tables won't have any borders so we need to tell the table that we want to draw a border around each one of these cells. We can call, we can think of them like cells, but they're really table data elements, yeah? So let's try and draw a border around these. So in the main table tag, we're going to put in border. Let's try border equals one. No, I've done something wrong there. Help if I spell it right. So make sure your spelling is correct. Um, so border equals one will draw a thin line around it, right? So if we set it to something like 10, then you'll see the line is much thicker around the edge. So we'll leave it at one here. Now it looks a bit cramped, right? 
so we want to try and stretch it so it fits the whole width of this page for example right or let's set it to something like we can set it to a pixel value so there's two things we can do we can do width w -I, width equals uh 100 percent so if the width equals 100 percent it's going to fill the full width but the problem with that is when you're looking at a quite wide screen or quite a wide browser you can see it stretching across the whole browser page and, it, and it's going to be a bit more difficult to read so maybe we can set it to a certain pixel width so we can say that this screen resolution is uh what is it 1080 by 1920 so 1920 if we set it to around 900 that's still going to be too wide so let's say it to uh, 600 Let's try 450. Something like 450 will be okay, right? So it's 450 pixels wide. Now, here you can see the table row. So this piece of information here represents this one row of data. And we want to make another row underneath. So how would we do this? There's you know there's a real simple way of doing this. We can copy this table row and all of this data. And just paste it below but in this example i'm going to retype it and i suggest you retype it as well and then maybe we'll copy um, some other ones afterwards so table row let's do another closing table row and then in between we want uh, you should really indent these right to make it a bit easier so now you can see it's like stepping down and it'll be a bit easier to read afterwards so we want table data table data and you know save a bit of time we will copy this table data tag we'll copy it Oops, let's do that again we'll copy it here one two three four so if you've got four in the beginning to represent the four columns you would want four here as well to represent the data that's going underneath so what do we want let's just make up some names right so first column so really we're looking underneath here. So if I save this for a second and refresh, you'll see there's the, you can see the date, you can see the row here, but there's no data in it. So let's say the first one, we want to put in a name. So then let's just make up a name. We'll just call it John Doe and save it. Now we can see John Doe here, right? Now a telephone number needs to go in here. So let's put this one here will be the telephone number, right? It's going to match up here, telephone number. So we'll just make a number up. Uh, and then we want an email so let's do john at gmail.com just make this up and then uh, we want location so let's say london let's save this so we just save it and then refresh now we can see the data inside right now what would be nice uh is if these ones here were bold right so we can say that these are titles or heading titles for these columns so let's go to name and we'll do strong remember strong will give us bold right and we'll copy this strong tag we'll paste it at the end and close it and then we'll paste it here here and here we can copy this one and paste it at the end Try and type this in manually if you can and try and get used to typing and closing and opening the tags and now you can see they're all bold now let's um now let's say we want to add another row of of data we want to add one more row underneath this one so why not just copy this one copy it go down a line and paste it and just fix this row line so it's sitting in between sitting in alignment right so we want to all these table rows we want them to sit in a line now we can just change this to something else like uh, Kelly let's just call this one Kelly Smith we'll change the phone number and then uh, we'll do Then we'll do this one in Liverpool. Now we've got two rows of data. And we'll do one more. So we we'll copy this. We'll go down. 
we'll paste it, we'll fix this row so it sits in alignment, and we'll do uh, let's do Nilesh. Go. So now we've got three rows of data <clears throat> and we've got <clears throat> four columns. So the first one, I normally set out the titles across the top and how many ever you add in here will determine the number of columns and then the row data will go underneath, right? Just like this. So that's how we can go about building tables. Now we can make this table look much, much better uh, using CSS. So in later tutorials, we'll come back and look at tables when we build um, like a good mock-up website example. We're going to be doing that later. Uh, we'll be able to manipulate this table and make it represent it much better than what it looks like here. But this is, regardless whether you're going to make it look good or not, you still need to do all of this. This is still all relevant. Um, you need this data in here, whether you're using CSS or not. You're going to need to do this. So get used to understanding how this table rows and table data works. It's worth um, maybe building a few different examples, maybe do one with three columns, do one with two columns, do one with four columns, get used to that. It's pretty straightforward as you can see. It's not very difficult uh, to understand. So once you get up to speed with that, then um, you'll be able to create these tables without any problem. In um, future tutorials, we'll probably be looking at something called Bootstrap. Um, that shouldn't be too far away. And when we look at Bootstrap, we'll be able to do responsive tables. So the tables will be able to grow and shrink. All of this stuff here actually will be able to grow and shrink depending on the browser size. So a basic example of that is as I'm resizing this page, can you see how some of the text resizes uh, to fit the width? That's called responsive design. This is not really responsive in a way, not fully, but you can see if I look at it on a mobile, it might look like this. And if I look at it on a desktop, it's you know, it's much wider. We call this responsive design. So we'll be looking at uh, maybe Bootstrap or some other tools in um, HTML5 to do that. So that's the end of this particular tutorial. Just make sure you save your work. That's an example of a basic table. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial. <laughs>